It is about the people who are working to save other people. Somewhere around 16,000 volunteers worldwide. I'm just trying to prevent the spread of the virus. More in common is checking in. I think it's just a really good way to keep people company. With heroes all over America. Call myself a doctor by day and a baker by night. A teacher helping small businesses and frontline workers. I want to make sure my students see examples of people reacting with compassion in this time. The Eagle Scout earning his badge by making 100 of these a day. I decided to start sewing masks. We've donated over 300. It's all ahead as we check in. Welcome to More In Common Check-In. I'm Michael Konigs. There's no shortage of depressing news in our country right now, but for every sad story, there's a positive one. People stepping up in a time of crisis to help their neighbors. So this episode is about the heroes among us. And we're starting with a doctor who's baking as a form of therapy and a way to honor those in the medical field. A cookie is fun to look at, it's sweet, it's very approachable, but why not make it something meaningful? I felt, you know, we don't have sports anymore, we don't have the Olympics, we don't have all these things that we normally look forward to, so now we need to look to our new MVPs. The new MVPs are, are these healthcare heroes. I'm Priscilla Sarmiento Gopana. I am the co-owner of Sarmi Sister Sweets. I'm also a pediatrician and a mom to two uh, wonderful little ones. My talent was always medicine until cookies kind of came along and took over. <laughs> Baking has been my therapy for a very long time. Even before this crisis started, the work that I do can be quite stressful. I like to call myself a doctor by day and a baker by night. The Health Hero Cookie Series was a very organic process. It is about the people who are, are working to save other people. One night, I was like, you know, I gotta highlight someone who's important to me. You know, Fauci was the first one that came to mind. I had posted it on one of my crafting groups that is also full of physicians and you know they sort of came up with a bunch of ideas oh you should do this person next you should do this person next and then you know meanwhile I'd gotten this list of really incredible people and then I figured out you know these are the real MVPs right now why not give them um, the highlight that they deserve it has become a canvas it has become a way to voice my opinion in a very disarming way. I usually start with a simple blank shape and then I trace an outline with an edible marker and then I take a little bit of icing, make an outline, fill it, and then I start painting with sort of a mixture of all edible things. I plan to do as many as I guess this crisis goes on, sending healthy messages about, you know, look, people are trying to help us or, you know, be informed, stay home, be safe. I think those are important messages to give out. And if a cookie can elevate that message or somehow, um, you know, make that message important to somebody, then I feel like I've done my job right. This is a great way to bring out uh, important messages to other people, but also to um, create positivity. And there's always a silver lining, even in a crisis situation. Even something as simple as a sugar cookie can be a way to change the world. I love this next story. It lets you adopt a grandparent virtually. Let's check in. Michelle, tell me, what is this program? And I found out about this Adopt-A-Grandparent um, campaign, which basically is virtual pen pals. So you don't have to obviously go into the care homes, which are all on lockdown. I think it's just a really good way to keep people company in a time where everyone's kind of stuck home and scared about what's going to happen. And you just want to keep everyone safe by physically not being near them. And it's one of the most vulnerable populations and yet a chance to connect to a new generation during this time. Yeah, exactly. So it's connected me to Marion, who's amazing, and we have so many similar interests, which is incredible, and I would have never met her otherwise. So the idea behind this, which we launched last October, was really about relieving isolation and loneliness and intergenerational communication. We decided to take the campaign digital last Monday 
And since then, we've had, I think now we're somewhere around 16,000 volunteers who've registered worldwide. And it's been such a heartwarming and overwhelming response, actually, to what we're doing. Marion loves to bake, and I own a bakery. And um, she wanted me to send her recipes, so she loves to bake and garden. And so we've been talking about all these things that we have in common. That's awesome. Helping yeah. out on the, the cooking front. Yeah, exactly. And she loves to make cupcakes for all of her friends in the care home, and she loves it. <laughs> Thank you guys again. It was so good to check in with you both and, and see this new friendship here. <laughs> Thank you for calling us. All right, have a good one. Okay, bye, Marion. Bye-bye. So Bye-bye. Now for some of my favorite stories that I liked online. This one is amazing. 95-year-old veteran who got a mohawk uh, to pass the time during the pandemic and raise some awareness with the mohawk challenge. Look at this. He's got nice white hair there sticking straight up. And uh, here's how he feels about it. Oh my, I like it. <laughs> and how about this man who sleeps with the picture of his late wife every night, and so his care worker decided to make a pillow uh, with, the, with the face of that, that wife of his and, and hands it to him here as he starts to cry. Just a powerful, wonderful moment of love lasting. Here's another act of generosity. A sanitation worker sets up shop to hand out wine bottles to nurses in New York. These are nurses who've come from all over the country to help. Uh, and here, after their shift, they can get a little wine to relax after working so hard to help the people in the city. And check out this mom and son who finally land a trick shot after bouncing a ping pong ball after a bunch of pans and finally into that solo red cup. Moment of triumph. Small business needs our help now more than ever, so this teacher decided to do something about it and help our heroes on the front line. Today we are at Cantina Barba and we're serving up 170 burritos to two different hospitals in Houston. Our group is called Feed the Frontline Houston. Our goal is to be finding restaurants that are maybe not operating at their top profit, buying large to-go orders from them, and then personally delivering that to eight hospitals all in the Houston area. It was just really nice that she decided to like have us feed all these people. Uh, we just were just really happy just to be a part of this whole experience. I started on my own for a week, uh, providing about a thousand meals, and then got to group up with some other amazing individuals in Houston. We now have a group of 15 that's all trying to scale this up and provide as many meals as possible. So my day job is at Yes Prep Southeast, where I work as a special education teacher with grades six through 12. And I think so much of this work is tied to my students. They are at home right now, but they're learning more than ever from the adults in their lives on how to respond to crisis. And I want to make sure my students see examples of people reacting with compassion in this time. This is all inspired by a group in New Orleans who's been doing the same thing. It is all funded from community members who are donating anything from $5 makes a huge difference in being able to provide a meal for a health worker. Through Houston and Dallas, we've raised over $100,000. And in Houston itself, today we'll be providing our 1,800 meal. We worked with the original Kalachi shop, Three Brothers, Romano's Pizza, and many more. We're up to 17 restaurants all in the Houston area. We were thinking of ways in the beginning, just to kind of like not only help our hospitality industry folks, uh, but also like the frontliners and medical industry. And then all of a sudden, we got this really awesome message asking us to um, make all this food. It started with a Venmo and a GoFundMe, and my first order was forty dollars at a Kalachi shop. And to know that we're placing orders of over a thousand dollars at each restaurant is so amazing. I've been making all the deliveries, and it's the best part of my day being able to go to a restaurant and know that this is helping them keep employees on their staff and then go immediately to a hospital and see the people that these meals are gonna feed. 
When an Eagle Scout sews, it's usually a badge to a sash, but not this Eagle Scout in Texas. He's sewing to help his community. I decided to start sewing masks because that's what the community needed. And I was just coming off of a big injury and I wanted to find a way to give back to the community. And I seen all the healthcare workers helping me. So I decided I wanted to give back it the best way I could. The amount of time and dedication that he's putting into this, people are reaching out to him, asking for help, and he's just 100% committed. He works on it every day. So we seen a mask online and we kind of reverse engineered it to find a way to create it our own way and it just went from there. I made these masks to Galveston County Food Bank, friends, families, UTMBs, Sandcastle Dialysis over in Leak City and they needed 61 so we're working on that right now actually. We've donated over 300 in the last week. My name is Austin Montabano, and I'm a, currently a junior at Texas City High School. About three weeks ago, he was doing all the cutting, and he was like, Mom, I just really, I want to try it. And I'm like, OK. And he sat down, and he was like, this is kind of cool. He goes, this isn't bad at all. So next thing we know, it just took off. He's just been a natural after that. She's been a big help with me. One mask takes about 10 minutes. We try to do it in stages, cut a bunch of material. And he zips through and sews all the sides, then ends and turns the fabric, and then I'll come in and help him with the elastic edge. Every day, we're trying to get out at least 100 a day. I'm just trying to help people that can be affected and prevent the spread of the virus. We get the materials from the mask the best we can at Walmart and Hobby Lobby, but people have been donating material and supplies that we need, and so that really goes a long way. Our biggest problem in this is we're running out of elastic, and so if anyone can find some elastic to donate, that would be amazing. I just always try to help out people the best way I can. Well, I am extremely proud of Austin. Uh, it's really something that's almost indescribable. So the motto of the Boy Scouts is do a good turn daily, and the Eagle Scouts, we just try to live by that and do the best we can in society. They teach the boys so many skills that they need in, in the real world, in everyday life. It makes me feel really amazing. It makes me feel good about myself that I'm helping the community and making other people's lives easier because people are less fortunate than me and I just want to get back the best way I can. We will be doing this for as long as we need to and just however long the virus is going on. Thanks for checking in with us and be sure to check in with your own loved ones in the days to come. Take care.